friends come and visit our studio. Catch them all in News Talks. Hello everyone, welcome back to Muse Talks. Uh, today we have a very interesting uh, guest, uh, in fact a couple, uh, from the publishing industry and also the literary world. Here with me, we have Jet Syed Ali Sameh, Nural Huda Jaffa, who's an editor and a translator. That's a full-time job, but she has actually authored a few books, uh, which she's going to share with us too. Cik Syed and Nurel, thanks for coming to, you know, Muse Talks and sharing with us your journey in the publishing world. Uh, let's uh, start with Cik Syed first. Okay, because um, we know that Pustantika National has been around for um, more than, how many years? 60, 60 years. years. Since 1963. Yes, Is that correct? Right? The company was founded by my late father uh, in 1963. Uh, he started uh, at a small bookshop at 40 Kandahar Street. From there, he built up the business. Pustaka National evolved from just a bookshop to doing publishing, also doing distribution. So his main focus was actually to produce Islamic literature for the students in that Kampung Gulam area, the Madrasa al Junid, Madrasa uh, al Sagaf in that area. And uh, from there, expanded into doing uh, publishing, translating works from Arabic sources, from Indonesian writers into Malay language. So it all started in 1963 uh, and then they expanded and then we actually set up another associate company, a subsidiary company in uh, Kuala Lumpur, distributing throughout the whole Nusantara area, focusing mostly into Malay language. Besides the Islamic text, we also start doing literature, uh, novels, children's books and uh, recently we ventured into the digital sphere by doing audiobooks ebooks and other other platforms that we are now uh, investing our content and try to propagate the content mostly in malay language but we do some in arabic some in uh, english also Mm, yeah. uh, all these are part of the history of Pustaka National. I'm sure you know there are many of us uh, who would actually recognize the logo. It's been around, uh, I think, during Madrasa time. Yes. We do have uh, books like the title is Mari uh, Belajar Semayang. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually our most uh, sold out book. Mm. Uh, I think we probably printed almost 200,000 copies. Because mm. yeah, because mm. it was used in all mostly most of the madrasas and the part-time madrasas that you can find, they use that book mm. as a basic text for young children to study how to pray. Mm. Uh, so that is our top seller. It's still being used today in Singapore, Malaysia, also sometimes in Brunei. But I would say that is our number one seller, mm. and it is what we call an evergreen title. So we'll still continue producing that content. Until now, it's still in print. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also tried to produce an e-book, but people still want print. Yeah. yeah so I think it's easy for them to refer. Yeah. Uh, right. So it's a basic text. Mm. Uh, it's one of the top sellers for our company, and people remember Pustaka National because of that. Yeah. Book, right? It's like a must-have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in every household. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, uh, that's very interesting. So how many reprints will that be already? I think it's now on uh, its 29th reprint already. Oh, wow. 29. Yeah. yeah, we used to print every time we reprint, we produce about 10,000 copies. Mm. So you can imagine it's about more than 200,000 copies uh, based on reprints. Yeah, Fantastic. So, Any uh, other titles that, you know, has got that kind of... Uh, yeah, yeah uh, another one of the most popular titles uh, is a book by uh, Imam Al-Haddad. Mm. Uh, it's called Nasihat Agama dan Wasiat mm. Iman. Uh, that one has also gone into up to 28 reprint. Mm. It's a hardcover book, text for people to study in the mosque, mm. which covers a lot of genres on Islamic uh, knowledge, expanded into Indonesia, Malaysia, and even Brunei. That text is quite famous and uh, it's still being used today as part of the classes you, mm -hmm. you find in the, in the mosque. And uh, that's another of our top sellers that uh, we have published, uh, that people recognize right. uh, our brand for it. So for those two titles, uh, is it just in Malay or you have translated into other languages? Yeah, it's basically, as we focus mm. mostly in Malay language, it's produced in Malay. But uh, we have partnered with other organizations. Actually, Darul Akam has produced the English edition of Mari Belajar Semayang, mm. which is being used in Darul Akam for its Muslim converts to use. And then for Nasi Agama, there is an English edition mm. available now. 
uh, which is translated by one of the descendants of Imam Al Haddad in Singapore. Mm. Uh, that is all being sold uh, by them. We are not publisher of that edition. It's an English edition because we are focusing more on Malay language books. Right. At what age uh, were you involved in this? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Was I mean, it you know a choice or ah, <laughs> you have okay. the passion to also yeah. embark on the journey? Okay. Since uh, my father started the company, mm. he. Regularly brings the children mm. along with him to uh, say book fairs mm. and book exhibitions. So during our free time, we were encouraged to go to the shop mm. to help out. And then when we have book fairs like in the at the old Harbour Front, mm, World Trade Centre. Yeah, so they have <laughs> book fairs there. So we were required right. to participate. And helped out from such a young age, lah. Late primary school, we were involved, and then uh, I remembered my earliest uh, visit to the mm. shop was at Jalan Pasar Baru. They had a bookshop there, and I went to kindergarten, which is a few units away from Jalan Pasar Baru bookshop. Mm. So what happens is that my father will bring me to the kindergarten. He will leave me there mm. after the classes is over. Then one of the shopkeepers will come and. Take me from the kindergarten, put me at the shop, and I was roam around the shop reading some books mm. and then waiting until my parents come mm. to pick me up to send me back home, lah. Like a childcare center. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, so I was in my early mm. days at the bookshop. Exposed shop, with yeah, uh, exposed with books, books, and then as I grow older, mm. then I got involved into helping my father uh, going through the manuscripts. He would check the final proofs. Mm. And from then, I would get to know about what is editing and and how to produce the books. Mm. And then he would bring me to the printers to see how books are produced. Mm. And then a lot of times, go and help pack the books into boxes yeah. and then ship them out. Yeah. But I actually did not join the company after I completed my university education. I actually mm. went to a self-help organization. That was my first job. Mm. And then from there... After three four years, he asked me to help out as the company was expanding and moving its dis- distribution office into Kuala Lumpur. Right. So he asked me to come and help out with the management of the subsidiary office in KL. That's when I left the organization and started to join Pustaka mm. National full time. Did my masters uh, in Malaysia at mm. UPM uh, while also helping out with the yeah. company business there mm. until. I finally returned back uh, when my late father passed away in 2016. Mm. Uh, that's when I came back to Singapore to run the whole uh, publishing uh, company mm. from the HQ in Singapore. So during that period while you're helping out, right, was there any uh, issue working with your late dad? Because, you know, uh, probably you have a different perspective. When he first started, it was more on the Islamic books. Well, I was studying in Malaysia mm. at uh, East Tech. Mm-hmm. I met a, several scholars there mm. and I actually introduced the concept of doing uh, scholarly writing. What I did was to approach some of the lecturers at East Tech and then we decided to publish their books. And we started a series called the... Islamic contemporary series mm. uh, wholly in English so that was one of the things that I proposed to my late father when he agreed that he want to expand mm. the role besides just doing Malay language not so popular in among the Malay language market but it was I think necessary to showcase uh, what the region yeah. as an Islamic scholarship can produce mm. another thing that we did uh, was we actually did our own audio podcast Oh, wow. In 2004, if I'm not 2004. mistaken. 2004. Yeah. Wow. It was one of the first trials of doing right. podcasting. Uh, we had uh, two podcasters. Mm. Huh? So they did on Malay literature. Mm. The whole focus was on promoting and showcasing our Malay language literature books in that podcast. We invited uh, some significant and knowledgeable writers, locals, mm. to come in and we did some discussion And of course, uh, Nora was one of the podcaster. Oh, okay. Uh, with another of 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 uh, her colleagues, so we did that for about, I think, five or six episodes because we were very new. Mm. So we didn't get traction. So in the end, we decided to maybe it's not yet time. Yeah. For that market to accept <laughs> that concept. 
Do you actually have the sauce? Uh, like, can we actually have, you know, a listen to it? Where did I put it? Uh? It's in the web. <laughs> okay. Yes. What, on the Pustaka National website? It's no, no, no. We actually moved it to YouTube. We have a YouTube channel which we call PNTV. Mm. Uh, so, it's actually being parked in that. Okay, yeah. so it's available there. It's available for subscribers only. Mm. The One of the things that Pustaka National uh, is known for is being something that is new. Mm. Bringing something new to the market. Mm, mm, mm. In 1980s, uh, we produced the first hardcover Islamic textbook. And that has been well received by the market. Uh, another thing that we introduced was promoting our authors via podcasting, audiobooks. What I want, I'm trying to say is that Second is always looking for new opportunities. We want to be the first to do it. I understand. It might not work, but we want to show that we want to be innovative. We want mm. to be creative. We want to show that we trendy. Want to Early adopters. adopters yeah. yeah, that's, okay. that's the yeah. word to use. So, Norel, you were a podcaster <laughs> in 2004. My partner was Khadija Seron. Hmm. Um, we met in NUS and she was already, um, she had experience working in the broadcast industry. Okay. Right? So, she helped us a lot, guided us hmm. um, in terms of interviewing um, our guests, hmm. vetting through the questions that we asked, right. things like that, yeah. Hmm. So, she was very helpful. What's the setting like? Is it in the studio? <laughs> <laughs> we we try to find um well, definitely not in the studio mm. in a shop house in a library we managed to get a room right mm. um and we supported us uh, one time we did it in a hotel room because we managed to get free hotel stay right. and then we said okay let's just do it <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, I understand it's a uh, focus on authors. So uh, those authors, uh, you know, are they very uh, prominent? Prominent, yeah. Prominent authors. Uh, yeah. I, I remember Peter Gusingo, right. Manaf Hamza, yes. mm. and the rest I can't remember. Uh, oh. Muhammad Latif Muhammad, uh, late, late, uh, late, the late Muhammad Latif mm. Muhammad. Pak Jamal Tukimin. Ah, okay. Mm. So they are quite established authors lah. That we mm. publish their works, mm. then we use as a part of the promotion tools. Mm. So yeah. they even Literary have re best, re okay. reading of their works, yeah. oh, okay. mm. and then we'll discuss with them oh, okay. what are their hopes and aspirations mm. of their books. So it's more literary mm. based. So maybe that's why it didn't catch mm. on so soon lah. Just audio, just yeah. audio, yeah. Uh, I, I no think cameras. I strongly, you know, encourage you all to pursue <laughs> because there are so many other channels, you know, they talk about history and stuff like that and they are, you know, getting a lot of listeners uh, mm. when you're interviewing authors. They have a lot of stories and people can learn, uh, listeners can also learn and there's a lot of takeaway uh, for them too because they can use it even like, you know, for schools, for example, uh, all the uni students, when they need to find out more about facts, you know, these days, uh, people don't read books, right? Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think uh, it's another way uh, to engage them. So, Norel, uh, you've been really quiet, so let's go to you. <laughs> uh, can you share with us, you know, mm -hmm. how you uh, start and um, get into this whole uh, publishing and also, you know, uh, recently have authored a few books? Yeah. My involvement in the mm. publishing industry started after I finished uh, my NUS studies. Mm. That was in 1992, right? Wow. So after uh, after um, after I finished my exams and then I got my results, I was waiting for mm. the graduation ceremony. So that's when then you started to look for jobs, right? There was an opening uh, for a an editorial assistant mm. at Bookworm Publishing. I just saw it at Straits Times. It's just that I have to do proofreading and support the editorial mm. and the art department. So I, I applied and I got a job. So I became a part-time staff there mm. for six months. Mm. And that was the time when I learned things related to making a book mm. from writing. I'm, I'm, I wasn't a writer. I was an editorial assistant. As the editorial assistant, I had to do whatever the artist, whatever the editor mm. or whatever the writers yeah. asked me to do. I learned quite a lot from the artist and from the editor. Quite a manual, you know, back then, 19... Yes. 92, yeah. right? Yeah, 1992. <laughs> you know, paste up, like, mm. I learned how to use cow gum, la, oh. and then that stuff, right? There was a time when desktop publishing was catching mm. up. I remember because I was taught to do book layout mm. um, using page maker. So I had that kind of foundation. But then after I left Bookworm, after six months, I joined self-help group. Mm. And that's where I met him. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, but then we got married. Then I left the company, the organisation. 
um, to join him in KL. Throughout that time, I was, because I had experience in translating, mm -hmm. I had experience using page maker in uh, layout, some basic knowledge on design. So I helped them. And that's where I learned about mm. selling books mm. from his staff. Mm. And it's only in 2007 that I joined Pustaka National as a full-time staff, mm. as a publishing executive when we moved back to Singapore. And then in 2016, I left the company. Mm -hmm. It's only in 2017 that I decided to become freelance editorial consultant mm. and translator. <laughs> so well, is that because uh, it's like, you know, a conflict of interest that like husband and wife uh, no, 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 no. There was no conflict okey. involved like because he is the boss. Mm. He is the director mm -hmm. and I'm just the staff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So there was no issue about decision making because mm. ultimately decision making is his. Mm. That's his role, right? I take directions mm. and then I can advise on certain things. Yeah. I can make suggestions. Right? But ultimately, he is right. the managing director mm -hmm. of the company. Yes. So I think um, it, it's more of... Um, realignment right mm. of the business interest um, business concern and in a way there is the hikmah there mm. because I became independent mm. I could pursue other things I met other people mm -hmm. to do jobs that mm. I probably won't be able to if I continue under Pustaka National mm. right so and he had been supportive of me to venture into my new role as an mm. editorial consultant and it's something that I really like to mm. do but can Cik Syed engage you yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. There, there's no animosity mm. <laughs> <laughs> so far I will be the first choice mm. you know uh, when he has jobs right, right. Uh, when he has publication mm -hmm. and I still help him in selecting mm. books books that he wants to translate into mm -hmm. Malay or uh, when people come to him with manuscripts, mm. um, then I help to assess mm. and then give my opinion and see, come to some sort of agreement, yeah. things like that. Nah. So in terms of engaging her as an author, so there's no issue at all, right? He hasn't hasn't engaged me uh, as an author. Okay. Even though like, okay, I have this book yes. published by Pustaka National. These two books as an imprint of Pusaka Islamia, mm. which is an associate company of Pusaka yeah. National, right? But I've never submitted a manuscript to Pusaka so National. So you don't talk about work at home? We do talk about work. <laughs> like no idea that, you, you know, you are submitting this project under... He knows. Oh. It's a case that I get my funding independently mm. or I ensure that the decision is not a case of I pass it to him mm. a publish my book. <laughs> No, it's, it's not that. Very professional. Yeah, yeah. Because one of the reasons, sorry to go back to yeah, history. No mm -hmm. Back to yep, history, yep, right? Yep. So this is my very mm. first book. Mm -hmm. Where is my home? Mm. Pusaka National have been publishing children's books, yes. right? But then it stopped. For whatever reason, I do not know. But Pusaka National stopped publishing children's books mm. for, for... As in a uh, picture, children books? No, mostly middle grade. La. Middle yeah, grade, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, right. I guess after that, um, Pusaka National decided to yeah. go further into publishing children's books right. and since I was the publication executive at that point yeah. in a way I felt that if I'm going to be involved mm. in the publication in the production of children's books mm. I should know more about that also at the same time the National Book Development Council now Singapore mm. Book Council had been organising seminars and workshops on yeah. children's picture books yeah. so I attended a workshop mm. and then they had an open call I submitted this manuscript mm. that was inspired by my cat, my kitten at that time, mm -hmm. and he got accepted, mm. right? And he was supportive in the way mm. that he did not disturb me when I was writing the <laughs> manuscript, right? And then I got accepted. Right. And then I was like so happy in the office. I said, my story is accepted. <laughs> then, then one colleague asked me, why do you not send the manuscript to Pustaka National? Yeah. I said this, because I do not want people to think that they publish because I'm his wife. That's the I first know, thing people I think. I know, I yeah. know. I get stuff like that. <laughs> oh, you're going back home with oh, your dear. boss. Okay, so everyone, yeah. <laughs> For the record, she did not, okay? It's all her own effort. <laughs> yeah. So that's a healthy relationship, right? Uh, publisher and author. Uh, because, you know, the publisher actually just allow the author to do whatever he or she thinks is right for the book. No. Know? No? No. <laughs> okay. I, no. I'm not saying that it's not the healthy mm -hmm. relationship. Uh, I'm saying that in reality, mm -hmm. it's not that the publisher tells the author, do whatever you want. Mm. There is this whole thing about the editing process. Yeah. And the publisher will select the manuscript based on its merits mm. and whether it fits the publisher's direction mm. or focus of publication. So I will go through and I'll keep in mind about Pusaka National's mm -hmm. um, general direction yeah. in publication. Then 
I'll give my suggestions, mm-hmm. right? And then we'll discuss with the author. If there are some, if there are some changes that needed to be made, whether it's language mm-hmm. um, editing, definitely any book needs language mm-hmm. editing. Even my book, I'm an editor, mm-hmm. right? But I know that my manuscript, my manuscripts need to be edited. So editing has different levels there, right? right? You have substantive, you have line, you have mm-hmm. copy editing, mm-hmm. then after that you have proofreading. Um, it's something that many authors still do not know, may not be aware of that. So it's not just that the author do whatever you want with mm. the story. There has to be a form of mediation. The editor's job is to make that manuscript the best that it can be, yeah. to make sure that the manuscript achieves what the writer wants. Yeah. Right? Because sometimes the message can be obscured mm. by certain things. The manuscript can be strengthened by removing certain things. So I've been an editor um, telling an author yeah. some changes need to be made. But I've also been an author yep. on the other side receiving comments mm-hmm. from my editor saying that, oh, some things need to be mm-hmm. changed or what do you think of this, what How do you think of this? Feel? So far, I haven't had anything major that made me go like, I don't like this editor. <laughs> my principle is always choose your battles mm-hmm. because ultimately what you want to achieve and yeah. certain things you can give up. But certain things I must maintain. So for for example, like this book, When Hadja is the mm. there is this scene, I insisted that they are on a um, hot air balloon. So somebody asked me, why do you have a hot air balloon? Mm. You know, why do you have a hot air balloon? Yeah. Singapore children, they are not exposed to hot air balloon. Yeah. Right? So I said that, no, there may not be a hot air balloon in Singapore, mm-hmm. but children in Singapore, they are exposed to so many things through different channels of media. Yeah. They are bound to see something like a hot air balloon, yeah. either in the books that they have read or in TV shows that they have watched, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So we cannot underestimate what a child in Singapore is exposed to. Correct. If you go to a house, like a family gathering, sometimes the TV is on, yeah. the adults may be watching it, mm-hmm. but the kids are watching it too. They may be playing, but they're also watching it too. Yeah. They have shows from different parts of the world entering into the TV, mm-hmm. into their iPads, right? Just because those things don't happen in Singapore mm. does not mean that we cannot expose mm-hmm. those things to Singapore children. Correct. Those are the things that I don't yeah. compromise. Yeah. And I do hope uh, that the editor or the publisher uh, would accept that. Mm. What is the most significant change that you have seen? Most Not just the tech, but you know, in terms of the process. The publishing industry is now learning copyright. AI coming into the picture, then we have chat GPT mm-hmm. coming into it. So the industry is all learning what is going to happen yeah. and they are adapting. Mm. Uh, they're still not sure how to use all these new technologies, but I believe they will learn from each other mm-hmm. and then they will decide, okay, what's the next best step to do? Uh, I remember in the 1990s when digital started to come and then people say that mm-hmm. e-books will kill all print books. Yes, there was some reduction in people mm-hmm. buying books. Yep. And then they are looking more into e-books. Mm-hmm. Still, the amount of production of physical books is still there. Mm-hmm. So, it's no longer... You versus me kind of scenario yeah. is a now more of complementary. Mm-hmm. Uh, publishers are now doing print and digital in audio, mm-hmm. in ebooks, even doing promotion from non traditional sources. Like used to be, all promotion was in bookstores via prints, yeah. in newspapers, magazines. Now they are going to digital, yeah. social media, TikTok, Correct. your YouTube channel. So. I think the industry is adapting to whatever mm. technology changes are happening. Uh, still a long way to go. We are still learning. We will learn and adapt as we move along. La. So I wouldn't say there's any significant change. I mean, the biggest change was moving from print to digital. Mm-hmm. That is quite significant. Mm. Process all have changed from doing the paste up. Yep. Now everything is on the desktop computer. Yeah. And now with the addition of audio coming mm. into, uh, all these are new add-ons to the print book. 3D, AR, VR, yeah. all coming into, I think we'll adapt mm. and then we will see how best we can maintain the main aim of publishing, mm. which is basically to spread knowledge yeah. to the masses. La. Yeah, you mentioned chat GPT, right? Yeah. Is that going to be a threat? Again, we do not know. Mm. Uh, we are still looking at the processes and mm-hmm. we're adapting some publishers actually utilizing chat GPT mm-hmm. to do mostly on PR, marketing, blurbs, and but not so much on the content. The content is basically original work. We still mm. maintain that because uh, of copyright, we want to focus on originality. 
Mm. So utilizing ChatGPT to come up with stories, there are some doing it yeah. now. It's still not as good as original work. Yeah, Nurel. Uh, mm. Challenges and rewards of being both a publisher and author, especially mm. as a married couple. Can you comment on that? Challenges, of course, like to um, sometimes when you're at home, we have to maintain a division between work and mm. home, right? So that's one challenge. Mm. You know, he wants to talk about work and I'm like, I'm cooking. Or I'm saying, no, 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 don't. I want to rest. I want to rest. No, I want to do something else. Don't, let's not talk about work. The reward is not as an author or publisher, mm. but more of like a... Uh, the editor and the publisher to me I'm not sure about him but to me is when to see the books being well received mm. right and I think one of my happiest moments one of my proudest moments was um, at the recent Anugrah Pesuratan mm. uh, which is the award for Malay books in Singapore and then in the children's category mm-hmm. like they had this publication um, and out of the five uh, picture books listed in the shortlisted I think three was from Pustaka National. Wow. Right? Yeah. We have Fikri and then one was Aiman, right? And then the other one is the winner, mm. um, Ferry Menyaga um, Kelestarian Daud. That is more like an adaptation, right? Uh, Ferry? No, Ferry is actually an original work. Oh. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a series. Okay. Ferry originates, the series Ferry originates from Indonesia, right? Yeah. Actually, it's just like one story. And he had the vision to... Expand take, it. Yeah, expand yeah. it and collaborate. And localize it. Yeah, collaborate with the Indonesian mm. uh, publisher. Make it into a series for mm. Ferry. Because Ferry actually belonged in a series of uh, different modes of transport, right? Yeah. So he had the vision mm. to expand it and then made it into an ebook with audio... And then to see that mm. one of the titles winning the top mm. prize, right? I was definitely happy. The one thing that I remember was he left the, the hall earlier. I knew he was waiting for me downstairs. Right. Uh, I came down from the third floor, I think. Mm. And I walked out to look for him. And then he was sitting in the corner. <laughs> tapping, 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 tapping. And I knew that he was putting it on, on social media. Mm. And I wish that I had taken that photo because there was the time when I was like, I felt so proud mm-hmm. of what he had done. And then how he brought me along to be involved in the publication of Fiki Munaiki Bas and then mm-hmm. Aiman O Aman and then Ferry. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's quite a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she said so. I, I, I think I'm sure you can do more. You know, picture books. I mean, there is a lack of mm. local children's mm. picture book uh, being produced in Singapore. Mm-hmm. So that's why we venture into producing mm-hmm. the series of children's picture books, with twofold target. One is to mm. encourage more writers mm-hmm. on picture book. One. Second thing is to uh, encourage our young children to actually read local content. Yeah. And to encourage them to actually read Malay. That's fantastic. We uh, were involved in a fairy series for the yeah. audio uh, books. So the next step, you know, we can do animation perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we did talk to uh, several production houses on mm-hmm. what to do and how to go about it. Some of them is told us that we need to produce 40 episodes to do a children's television series. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a bit Difficult because we just started with 10. Yeah. As things move now, we are not looking more towards broadcast. That's why we started our own PNTV mm. YouTube channel. These are things we are exploring and deciding whether we can have the means to produce such a, a animated series. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully with the right kind of uh, financial and support from the government, we will venture and see what we can do. Lah. But we are also uh, translating a lot of foreign publications mm. uh, into our children's market. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, like I want to show this. This is actually uh, one of our books that we acquired uh, from Turkey. So mm. it's actually a Turkish book. Uh, we translated it and she did the translation. And then we produced these type of books which are not available in the market. Mm. So these are things that we are doing. And then one of the newest titles that we'll be producing will be this series. Mm. It's actually an Indonesian book. Again, uh, why do we do this? Because we want to find titles that are not available, not yet written by our locals, but 
I think will be more interesting to our local children to read, help to encourage more people, young writers to come and produce their own children's books. For well, this kind of stories, right, on imagination and all that, will there be scenarios whereby it is not suitable, you know, in a Malay culture or, yeah, even for Muslim? When we travel, mm. when I travel all over some countries, we did come across mm. books that are interesting but may not be suitable to our culture. Mm. One of the more interesting titles was a book about hugging. Mm. So it's quite common in Europe that yeah. they hug their children. Yeah. Non-relations mm-hmm. can hug children. So by we bring it to our culture, I don't mm. think we uh, like yeah. other people hugging our children, right? Uh, these are some things that we need to evaluate mm-hmm. and then decide, oh, is it suitable for our culture? So these are books that probably we will not bring mm. into the market and bring only those materials that are suitable for our culture, for our children to read. Fantastic. I do think that publishers have room to be more open, be more adventurous, especially children's picture books. Mm. Because we have a lot of books talking about going to places in Singapore. Yeah. I think they're enough, really, <laughs> right? And I was so happy to see, I think it was launched last year or two years ago, book published by a local author, mm. Fishing a Polar Bear. Yes, I think uh, the writer is Inshira. Inshira yes. Yeah, by Inshira. Mm. I think the publisher is Magic Story Lab. Mm-hmm. I love those books. Mm-hmm. The two books. Because one, the illustrations are different. Yeah. The main character mm-hmm. is the polar bear mm-hmm. that's lost the babas. Yeah. Eh? They came to Singapore. Yeah. And then you have penguins. Mm. A few years back, there was this book by a Korean writer mm. featuring two polar bears. And it's such a beautiful story about mm. a mother protecting her cub. And it's a story about kindness mm. as well. I was hoping that that one publisher said, okay, let's take it up. Translate it into Malay, you know. When I asked two Mm. publishers, why don't you take out this book to publish? Get it translated into English or Malay, right? And the reason given given was that these books will not sell in schools Mm. because there's no snow in Singapore. (laughs) I remember talking about it when I was in Jakarta. I spoke to the two publishers. Mm. So that was the Mm. reason that they gave to me. Mm. So I was like, like, oh, disappointed to hear that reason but I do understand at that time Malay books are bought by schools yeah right parents Mm. don't buy at that time so I guess the publisher at that time were catering to Mm. the school sector and then they know that the school sector are looking were looking for certain kinds of books correct I see now that there are publishers who are more open Mm. And then hopefully there are teachers who are more open yep. in selecting books. So I'm happy for that. Pesta Buku, um, I love to sell books. I love to meet parents mm. or grandparents mm. for that matter. When they say, oh, buku apa nak beli, you know? <laughs> saya ada cucu ni, yeah, saya yeah. nak cucu ni. I love to say, oh, mm. beli ni, beli ni, beli ni, beli ni. Mm. Right? And they are aware that because they speak less in Basa Melayu, in, in home, it's more important for them to Correct. find books. That's right? right. I think the next step for publishers, publishers of Malay language books in Singapore is to go up mm. the age group. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of picture books. We have room for more. Yep. Because the variety of subjects yeah. that can be covered, topics that can be covered, are all there, you know. Right. But now you can venture further into chapter mm. books. We have the picture books. We have the easy reader books, then we have the chapter books, mm. uh, the middle uh, middle grade groups, mm. sorry. I'm middle age. <laughs> the middle grade books. And then you have the young adult. Right. Yeah, just mm. like how when I was growing up with, uh, you know, learning English, it's the ladybird books, right? Yes. They have those different stages or grades. Yes. Right? Yeah. So that we can, you know, uh, move on uh, to more difficult level of reading and, mm. uh, you know, words. So, so you have to capture yeah, them, so you right. know. Already, they may be interested in reading Malay books yeah. when they're in, pre- mm. in, in preschool, right? Yes. So you capture them Correct. further on. Right? You have books for primary one, primary two. So there's a gap there. So, the, the so there, there, a, there, mm. is, there is a gap there. Also, the trend is mm. uh, they're more visual. Yeah. And um, if you look at Pesta Buku last mm. year, mm. one of the, um, the top selling titles from my from where I stood, the children were buying comics, graphic mm-hmm. novels, you know, yep. for yeah. their age, but for Malaysia. So that's something that Singapore publishers should look into. Of course, it's expensive, but there are grants available, yep. you know, something that's worth pursuing. Interesting. There are many ways for authors also to embark so they can tap on to all these grants. And, you know, Nura is giving us a very good tip. Do you have anything else that you want to show? Your latest you already shown, is it? This is my first one and this is my latest. So the evolution from picture book to middle grade. Hmm. I skipped the chapter book. Can we just flip the book and if uh, there's enough illustrations? 
Oh, it's not every page mm, okay. But it's full colour mm. Middle grade book mm. And then uh, Because I was also the Like the overall editor And um, illustrations What mm, kind of illustrations yeah. to have And with the other three books as well um, In this collection mm-hmm. of middle grade books So it's an experience for me As an author mm-hmm. As well as an editor For the books that we just mm. developed Again, this one was developed with the assistance of the grant mm. from the National Arts Council. Mm-hmm. Different titles with mm. different concepts. Like for this, is more towards a graphic normal kind of mm. story. No, this is... Um, well, I, 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 yeah, I won't say it's graphic novel because it's still novel. Um, mm. It's more like an illustrated mm. yeah. novel, but it is from the fantasy genre, urban fantasy genre. I really had a blast working with the author and the illustrator. Uh, so this is uh, urban fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, this is fantasy, mm. right? Um, and this is it's called contemporary realis- realism, mm. right? Um, and this is historical fiction. So different different genre for and then the language level. This is more for primary five and above. Right. This one would be would be for primary two onwards. Yeah. This one, yeah. So this would be like in between. Is there like a, an indication to for which age uh, group? No. No, we didn't indicate. Mm. Different mm. kids have different levels. That's of, true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we just Some say that it's for eight years and above. Right. Yeah. So how do you go about marketing all these books? We had the book launch, mm. right? And then we had a series of online uh, posters. Mm. We had Peter Harian to interview mm. the authors. They have mm. a separate articles. Um, and then we had radio interview. I I did it with Maria Maria Mahat and. Amana Mustafi, mm-hmm. uh, we did the interview over right now with uh, Puan Nureha Bajuri. Mm-hmm. The different authors have their own ways of promoting through yeah. their own social media. How about yourself? How do you promote? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would do my own posting mm-hmm. on my own social media. Mm-hmm. I know I could have done a lot more mm-hmm. and uh, I have to figure out how to promote this mm-hmm. book. Mm-hmm. Further, uh, for the other authors like Maria Ma- Maria Mahat and Hassan mm-hmm. had their own book reviews mm. done, and they put it up on their own social yeah. media website. And yeah. I think that's a good thing yeah. for authors to do as well. Yeah, I think it's a good start. Not just you know for your own books, but uh, you can also review favorite book to review or something like that. I mean, um, we we also had mm. someone from Malaysia to come and teach our writers how to do promoting themselves on social media. Mm. So that's one of, the, one of the courses that we introduced during Pesta Buku last mm. year. Social media YouTuber came in and talked about how to promote your books on social media. Mm. So that is one avenue that we're trying to encourage our writers to you know to do it themselves. The writers need to promote their books. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, besides that, we have our production with Muse mm-hmm. to come up with uh, music, be- not music video, sorry. <laughs> To come up with videos <laughs> of them talking about their books. Yeah. So these are going up to all the Instagram, TikTok, mm. YouTube, mm. all the media that we know will just blast it up. Yep. And then, of course, to our traditional media, going to schools, mm. going to libraries, going to exhibitions to mm-hmm. do all the... Uh, traditional marketing mm. yeah. just to add on also because you've already produced all those uh, promo trailers right don't just publish it once uh, you can repeat it um, you know weekly you never know you know it, there may be new audience that just you know happen to see it for the first time yeah the good thing about social media like right it, it, it's not like program I'm not sure if it's good or bad but program is like everybody will be expected you know as a certain time you know people can watch it together but now it's like it's any time any day so you just you already have your asset yeah just keep posting and posting and posting Okay, just for everyone's knowledge too, uh, how Muse actually started working with uh, Pustaka National was because our Gang Anna project. We still have the series on YouTube if you want to watch it. Uh, we still have the books too. Uh, it's actually a colouring book. So if you're interested to get for your children, do drop us uh, a text, uh, a DM us. We can get this posted to you. <laughs> and we started that yeah. as a licensing project yes. with Muse to, yes, that's to right. introduce more local content Correct. to the market. Yeah. La. So we are hoping that the <laughs> next picture book will come from that series also. Actually, I have prepared uh, a few stories. Mm. Uh, yeah, I need to get the editor to <laughs> take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you so much uh, Encik Said uh, and also Nurel for spending your time here. I think there's a lot of very great insights and interesting stories that you all shared. Lastly, this is from Pustaka National. Um, also, they um, 
collaborating. Is this collaboration work, right? We this is from Creative Technologies. Creative Technologies. Yeah. So what they do is they have an ebook application mm. uh, available on Google Play. I think it's mostly for Android. They approached us. They wanted content, Malay language content, into their app. And then uh, we signed. We recently signed an agreement with them to put our children's content into their platform. So this will be coming out soon, hopefully by the Pesta Buku Melayu 2024. Mm. The content will be available for the public to subscribe. It's on subscription basis. Part of the promotion that we are doing with them is that uh, we are also promoting their app mm. to all uh, the public. And this is something that they offer to us. So we are offering to Muse. Mm-hmm. So what you can do is you can uh, approach Muse and then they can give you five free... Yes, five uh, lucky, five uh, lucky uh, subscribers. Subscribers can get one month free access to this app. How many books can the readers expect from Pusaka National? Yeah, so at the moment, because it requires audio, animation, mm. complete uh, number of content that we have available is around 60 titles. 60 titles. Oh, okay. Wow. So, hope it will mm. not be all by, 60 yeah, by that. <laughs> la. I mean, okay. it will take time to, yeah, yeah. to produce. So, in and phases. Yeah, mm. so hopefully maybe mm. around 30 titles should be available by that period, mm. la, hopefully. So, at the moment now, it's only in English and in Mandarin, Mandarin, correct? Yeah. So, whoever is interested, DM us, uh, we'll give you the access to the uh, app. Thank you, everyone. So, we'll see you again uh, in the next episode of Muse Talks. Let us know also if you would want us to interview any interesting individuals. Put a note. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.